You're watching Coronavirus in Connecticut, a Face the State special report. Welcome back. Governor Lamont is joining us once again from the executive residence to answer your questions. And Governor, uh, many people have been asking, are you and your family healthy, staying safe? Uh, we're certainly uh, staying safe. I think I'm healthy. I haven't gotten the test as yet. We're reserving those for folks who are showing symptoms, but uh, I probably should get a test at some point. But thank you very much for asking. Here with Andy, staying close to home. Good, good to hear, good to hear, good advice. Let, let's get to a question from Amanda from Old Lyme. Amanda Johnson wants to know, <clears throat> is shutting everything down is supposed to stop the virus? Why do cases keep rising? What is the point of turning people's lives and livelihoods for over a month now? And there were still over 2,000 new cases yesterday. Well, two thirds of the economy is still going strong, unlike a lot of our other states, uh, including manufacturing and uh, obviously health and other essential services. Um, but your bigger point is social distancing and uh, tamping this down, making a difference. I think the answer to that is yes. I mean, we were really worried that, that what you saw in Fairfield County, because that got uh, caught on fire by what was going on in New York, was going to go right up through New Haven and Hartford. And we've really mitigated that. We've uh, held down the nature of the surge. Our hospitals had capacity. Nobody was turned away for any reason. So uh, I, I think it is making a real difference. This could have been a lot worse. Governor, this next one's from William, who's self-employed. He stopped working when the job he was on was shut down on March 16th. He filed for unemployment and says, I've not heard back from unemployment yet, and there is no way to reach them. It's been about six or seven weeks since I've had any money coming in. I'm about out of it and need to feed my family. It's really frustrating, and I want to know if you approve of this or not. Well, I don't approve of that story. Um, we haven't shut down construction, so I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe it was very tight in, inside construction okay. and it was tough to keep your distance. Uh, we, as you know, we had, I don't know, 350, 380,000 uh, jobless claims. Then, as uh, I've told you before, that's 20 times more than we had during a comparable period during the uh, last recession. 20 times more. Um, thanks to Kurt Westby and his team at DOL, Department of Labor, I think they've got about 80% of those uh, uh, deposits made. Those checks have gone out, with one damn exception, for which I apologize. Those are the independent contractors, perhaps like this person. That's a brand new program that the federal government set up. And that's going to take us another week or two before I can promise you those checks will get out to you as well. But you should know they're going to be retroactive, and that means a lot. So you're not going to be going without it just taking us a little longer than it should. Governor, I know we have so many people who want to know about the state reopening, and that was the big focus of your briefing today. We're going to get to that after this commercial timeout. We're going to take another two-minute break, and Governor Lamont will return after these messages with more of your questions. You're watching Coronavirus in Connecticut, a Face the State special report. Welcome back. Governor Lamont is joining us once again from the executive residence to answer your questions. And Governor, uh, many people have been asking, are you and your family healthy, staying safe? Uh, we're certainly uh, staying safe. I think I'm healthy. I haven't gotten the test as yet. We're reserving those for folks who are showing symptoms, but uh, I probably should get a test at some point. But thank you very much for asking. Here with Andy, staying close to home. Good, good to hear, good to hear, good advice. Let, let's get to a question from Amanda from Old Lyme. Amanda Johnson wants to know, <clears throat> is shutting everything down is supposed to stop the virus? Why do cases keep rising? What is the point of turning people's lives and livelihoods for over a month now? And there were still over 2,000 new cases yesterday. Well, two thirds of the economy is still going strong, unlike a lot of our other states, uh, including manufacturing and uh, obviously health and other essential services. Um, but your bigger point is social distancing and uh, tamping this down, making a difference. I think the answer to that is yes. I mean, we were really worried that, that what you saw in Fairfield County, because that got uh, caught on fire by what was going on in New York, was going to go right up through New Haven and Hartford. And we've really mitigated that. We've uh, held down the nature of the surge. Our hospitals had capacity. Nobody was turned away for any reason. So uh, I, I think it is making a real difference. This could have been a lot worse. 
Governor, this next one's from William, who's self-employed. He stopped working when the job he was on was shut down on March 16th. He filed for unemployment and says, I've not heard back from unemployment yet, and there is no way to reach them. It's been about six or seven weeks since I've had any money coming in. I'm about out of it and need to feed my family. It's really frustrating, and I want to know if you approve of this or not. Well, I don't approve of that story. Um, we haven't shut down construction, so I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe it was very tight in, inside construction okay. and it was tough to keep your distance. Uh, we, as you know, we had, I don't know, 350, 380,000 uh, jobless claims. Then, as uh, I've told you before, that's 20 times more than we had during a comparable period during the uh, last recession. 20 times more. Um, thanks to Kurt Westby and his team at DOL, Department of Labor, I think they've got about 80% of those uh, uh, deposits made. Those checks have gone out, with one damn exception, for which I apologize. Those are the independent contractors, perhaps like this person. That's a brand new program that the federal government set up. And that's going to take us another week or two before I can promise you those checks will get out to you as well. But you should know they're going to be retroactive, and that means a lot. So you're not going to be going without it just taking us a little longer than it should. Governor, I know we have so many people who want to know about the state reopening, and that was the big focus of your briefing today. We're going to get to that after this commercial timeout. We're going to take another two-minute break, and Governor Lamont will return after these messages with more of your questions. Welcome back to a special edition of Face the State on this Thursday night. We are joined again by Governor Ned Lamont from the executive residence in Hartford's West End. And Governor, since your briefing this afternoon, so many of our viewers wrote to us asking about the reopening date of the state. And you had said that it was going to be May 20th. And today we heard that May 20th would be the date that the plan would be unveiled. And Indra Nui said that we might not get to reopening until June. What is the very latest on that? Uh, we're doing the testing. We're getting the analysis, we're getting the mass. So I think by May 20th, we'll be prepared to be able to say, this is what we, how we can start reopening our state. I had originally said, we're not gonna reopening any schools before May 20th, and that became sort of a date 
where you're going to set our direction. I think you're going to find some uh, more retail, non-essential retail. We can slowly get those uh, back up and operating, uh, you know, soon, you know, uh, after May 20th, early June. I'd like to think that's a possibility, unless we have a setback, uh, Dennis, because we've got to follow this carefully. Every uh, week we're surprised by something uh, COVID does. Kathy from Lebanon wants you to explain in detail the process that will be used for reopening that comes from that data you gather on this app. How will you process, well, how will this process be coordinated with surrounding states? The field goal. Uh, well, first of all, the process is what can we open safely and how can we do that? And let's say um, uh, going into a store right now, none of our stores are closed, but a lot of them we don't let you in. We want you to, um, you know, deliver the food outside, deliver the product outside, that type of thing. We're thinking about how we can get those stores open safely, perhaps with a mask, perhaps limiting the number of people who are inside. I'm going to hear that from um, Dr. Ko and Indra's uh, team uh, very soon. You know, what I'm doing with our neighboring governors is some of the other things that attract people back and forth, like bars and restaurants. It doesn't help if we, um, you know, open up our uh, bar in, um, let's say, New London, and they have it closed in Rhode Island. Then you just have a lot of people going back and forth across the border, and that's what we're just trying to avoid. Julie from Norwich says that once the casinos reopen, many people will be coming in from all areas to visit them. And she's concerned about the negative impact this may have on the spread in Connecticut and New London County. What are the governor's thoughts regarding this? Uh, we've got Rodney Butler, who's part of our uh, business uh, team, helping to advise the transition and opening up of Connecticut. Look, the tribes have been heroes on this, I got to tell you, because when they shut down their casino, they shut themselves down. They shut down all their revenue. And as a tribal nation, um, they did the right thing on behalf of all of us. So for that, I'm uh, very thankful. And I'm afraid I think they're going to have to stay closed longer for the very reason you said, because what they do is attract people from all over a region into our state in a big open area, which is likely to contagion. We do have a lot of people too, uh, who wrote to us about summer weddings. This woman in Ellington, whose son is scheduled to marry in August, and then Donna, whose daughter is getting married in mid-July. They've been expecting over 100 guests, and they, Donna wants to know, should her daughter postpone the wedding at this point, or is it possible <laughs> that she can have a gathering of 100 people? Um, actually, Emily, my daughter's getting married uh, Labor Day weekend, and Andy's asking me the same thing. Um, <laughs> look, I, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's just too early for me to say what it looks like. I've got to believe we're rounding the corner. I've got to believe by June we're getting back to normal. Uh, weddings may be a little different. Uh, maybe you're going to have to um, keep a little bit of space. I just I can't postulate on that, but I'm, I'm praying every day that we're going to be back to normal by then. We have some really quick questions. Or the new normal. You know, it can be like yes or no, or uh, will gyms be among the first places to reopen? No, second or third. Second Too or close third. quarters unless you can rearrange it. Wendy wrote in to say, are we going to be taking the temperatures of people getting off planes at Bradley Airport? Yes, I think we should do that. We're going to take temperatures of people going into the factories and uh, maybe even some of our big stores. What about beaches reopening? Well, they never closed, as you know, Dennis. Uh, maybe some of the municipal beaches did, but we didn't do that at the state level. Uh, but we are monitoring the traffic to make sure they don't get overcrowded. There are some people who want to know if campgrounds can reopen because there's a lot of safe social distancing there. I have to take a look at that. It depends on the social distancing. As you, that's the key to everything. If you can social distance, um, I say we can do it as long as people follow the protocols. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Governor, for joining us. And it's good to hear that your family is uh, safe and healthy. And uh, best of luck with that wedding planning this uh, in the coming weeks. And if you'd like to read, we got the same questions in our family too. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks for what you guys are doing. All right. Thanks, Governor.